Stadium in Pittsburgh, but they filled them with no problem. Another Steelers sellout, 59,000 fans on hand to watch their beloved Steelers go against John Elway and the Denver Broncos, and for Elway, of course, his NFL debut. And there is Elway. He'll be going up against Jack Lambert and company. Lambert, one of the links to the four Super Bowl teams, back for another season at linebacker. It's a completely opposite story on the other side. Cliff Stout was on an NFL roster for 56 games before he ever took a snap. He's in for the injured Terry Bradshaw, facing Randy Gratishar and the rest of the Orange Crush defense. Hello, everybody. Bob Costas along with Bob Trumpy. Welcome to weekend one of another NFL season. And without adding to the hysteria, and it is just that, especially around Denver, the question has to be about John Elway. Here it is, game one for him. Well, I feel sorry for the kid. He is a target today but for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but the most celebrated debut of any player to come in the NFL. Unfortunately for Denver, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is back is back. Jack Lambert is the headliner, but they've got 16 or 17 guys that can play great defense and they get to the quarterback. On the other side, Cliff Stout replacing Terry Bradshaw is a little more conservative a quarterback. And the Denver defense is also playing very well. Last year, they didn't play well at all. This year, they also can get to the quarterback and they really stop the run. This is a game that a lot of people are looking forward to and it's a rude beginning, I believe, for a career for John Elway, but he does have the talent to play. He's going to be playing here on an exceptionally warm day what if any effect might that have uh, shouldn't do anything to him he's going to be nervous no matter what the temperature is or what the game conditions are he should play well NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League today's game is brought to you by Dodge Cars America's driving machines and Dodge Ram Tough Trucks by refreshing Hawaiian Punch and by Goodyear, makers of Wrangler all-season radials for light trucks. Dan Reeves, at age 39 in his third season as the Broncos coach, he's 12 and 13 overall with them, 10 and 6 the first time, and then 2 and 7 last year in the strike-interrupted season. Chuck Knoll in his 15th year as the Steelers head coach at 51 years of age. His team has won four Super Bowls and made the playoffs nine of the last 11 years. Rich Carlos kicks off for Denver. Henry Odom will field it. And he gets outside with some running room. Odom, number 44, is taken down at about the 33-yard line. Odom, a rookie from South Carolina State, came close to breaking it, but he was run down. Here is Stout coming on with Walter Abercrombie in his second year out of Baylor, joining the veteran Franco Harris as his running backs. John Stallworth, Calvin Sweeney with Jim Smith having defected to the USFL, and Benny Cunningham, the tight end, are the targets for Stout. And there's the offensive line. Ray Penny went to Michigan of the USFL. Ted Peterson is in at his place. Abercrombie gets the call. But he's spun down for a loss by Louis Wright, number 20, who came up from the left corner spot. Davis, Carter, and Rulon. Four. Small, quick linebackers, Swenson, Busick, Radishar, Tom Jackson, excellent group. Wright and Harden are the corners, and Harden is perhaps the weak link. Dennis Smith, the strong safety, and Steve Foley at free. Second down, 12 from the 32. goes to Franco, dancing, trying to find some room, but only a couple of yards, leaving them third and about ten. Bob, the most obvious difference in the Pittsburgh Steelers offensively with Cliff Stout at quarterback is a little more conservative. Terry Bradshaw, always known for taking a chance and putting the ball up in the air. Franco Harris, the all-time leading ball carrier in rushing attempts in the NFL, I would think is going to be very busy today. Greg Hawthorne, a better pass receiver, number 27, comes in. Walter Abercrombie goes out. Defensive backs are in for the Broncos. Stout is given time, but now has to scramble and cut from behind. Rulon Jones and Barney Chavis were both there on the tackle. So Stout's first.
first series. Trump is not a success. Stout is a little more deliberate in his uh, actions as a quarterback. Bradshaw is very, very able to move around back there. Stout stays on the receiver for quite a while, tries to make the completion. Craig Coldwit is a punt for Pittsburgh. Zach Thomas fields it. Thomas, a rookie out of South Carolina State, is across the 30-yard line. A 38-yard kick by Colquitt, who sat out last year with an Achilles tendon injury and then won his job back in training camp from John Goodson. Elway's first series coming up. Sammy Winder and Rick Paros are his running backs. Gerald Wilhite is on the injured reserve list. Upchurch, Watson, and Jim Wright now the tight end. Riley Odom's having been waived. Mark Cooper, the left guard, is a rookie. Their second-round draft choice. He's Elway's roommate. And the handoff is to Winder, and Sammy Winder bangs out for perhaps five yards on the first down carry. Pittsburgh has gone to the 3-4 in the last couple of years. Willis, Dunn, and Beasley across the front. Jack Ham gone, Mike Merriweather in, Lambert, Taves, and Cole are mainstays. Woodruff and Mel Blunt in his 14th season are the corners. Donnie Shell, the strong safety, and Ron Johnson is the free safety. Nathan Poole, number 34, joins Winder now. choosing also to be very conservative with John Elway. Two runs, there's Nathan Poole. Excellent job by Robin Cole, comes underneath the block and is there to trip up Nate Poole. They had good field position there. It was a second down and four, now it's third and four. And if you can keep Pittsburgh out of that second and six or seven defense that they run, five defensive backs, great advantage for any offense. Blitz him, he lobs it out for Winder, and it's incomplete. Well, Minnesota really threw the blitzes on Elway in the last preseason game as they demolished Denver in that ball game, and Pittsburgh follows suit here. Head football coaches are great copycats. You see Lambert, you see Taves on the blitz. I'll tell you what, though, that was still well thrown by Elway. You see the pressure coming from the middle. He keeps that ball high. Knows the pressure is there. I believe he, uh, Sammy Winder turned the wrong way or he might have made a completion. And he'll, the Steelers will continue to blitz until Denver can somehow stop it. Luke Preston gets off a bad punt. And it's going to be down near the 30-yard line. Only a 32-yard kick by Preston. So the Steelers have the ball back. Neither team able to manage a first down. 11 minutes and two seconds to play in the first quarter. Consulting with Steve DeBerg, his backup. In the first series out of the way for John Elway for his official NFL career. I'm sure he's glad to get that first series out of the way. Now he's just any other football player in the NFL. for about four yards. Franco comes in today with 10,943 career yards. He's a cinch barring injury to pass O.J. Simpson and move into second place on the all-time list. He needs just 294 yards to do that. He needs 1,370 yards to go past Jimmy Brown's all-time record of 12,312. Even more impressively is that he is the NFL's all-time leading rusher in attempts. And in postseason play, he's rushed for literally two more seasons. Stout to the air and finding oh. Abercrombie who stumbles in and can't hold it. Good choice by Pittsburgh. The Denver defense is very, very active. There's Shavis, 79 on Larry Brown, 79. Like number. This ball could have been caught, although Stout threw it a little bit low. When you throw screen passes, the running back has to get his head around as quickly as possible to look for that first block. It must be an accurate throw between the numbers. It's not acceptable if it's waist high. Now Hawthorne has come in to replace Abercrombie. 
scrummage. On third down, seven. Stout over the middle, Calvin Sweeney. Sweeney with some awfully big shoes to fill. Lynn Swan having retired. Jim Smith having gone to the USFL. And Sweeney, who, as you see, has been productive in limited playing time, averaging better than 20 yards a catch in his first few seasons in the NFL, makes the first down grab in Denver territory. Roger Jackson, number 28, made the tackle. Man-to-man -man coverage underneath, zone deep. And Pittsburgh beats it the first time. That'll run Denver out of that defense the next time. From just outside the Denver 47, Stout will throw on first down. And he'll connect again, this time to Benny Cunningham, the big tight end. Biggest tight end in the league, a gain of 15. Cunningham, 6'5", 260 pounds. Green Bay jumps in front of Houston, 7-0. Lynn Dickey to Paul Kaufman, 22 yards for the first TD of the game. We'll be in Green Bay next week, Trump. Steelers go in there against the pack. A lot of people think that Green Bay is a club to be reckoned with this year in that national conference. makes his first appearance in the backfield. Franco loses the football, and it's Stout who has to make the stop. Now, that ball was lateral forward. They're going to have to bring Mike Harden back. I mean, that's a good idea, but really can't allow it, Trump. Great play by Rulon Jones. Jumped underneath the block of Ted Peterson. Was right there to uh, take the handoff, just as Stout handed it to Franco Harris. And a big turnover. You'll watch. You see, oh, it's Tom Jackson, excuse me, that makes the contact. Then Rulon Jones hands on the ball. Good blitz by Denver. Excellent choice and time. Pittsburgh had just made a big first down. He wasted all that energy. Elway with good field position. And Bob, uh, if I may make the point, I do believe that field position today for both of these teams offensively is the most important cog to winning. ball is placed at the 35-yard line of the Broncos. You heard the announcement by referee Jerry Seaman. Eight minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first quarter. Denver has the ball back. No score. Trump, that fumble recovery by Rulon Jones had to be heartening for Dan Reeves. Last year, the Broncos turned the ball over 36 times, far and away the most in the NFL. No other team had more than 26 turnovers. So that's a statistic they'd like to reverse. They're on the long end of it here. And Elway is going to go up top. He's looking for upchurch. There might be interference, and there is. Dwayne Woodruff had the coverage, number 49. And Denver's going to have the ball at about the 23-yard line of Pittsburgh. Good choice by Dan Reeves. First series. He was rather conservative. Two handoffs and then one desperation throw to Sammy Winder against the Blitz. And nowadays it seems in the NFL that the passing down, the pure passing down, is first down. Because then you know you got three defensive linemen, four linebackers, and four defensive backs. Pass interference, number 49. First that's down. against Dwayne Woodruff. And that's a very long first down. And, and now Denver can go with about 80% of their offensive plays. When you're between the 20s, 80% of the offensive plays are designed to be used in that area. on the first down play from the 23-yard line. Winder will carry, and Winder squirts through for decent first down yardage. There is a lot of pressure on this rookie from Southern Mississippi. They're without Gerald Wilhite, who has a hamstring injury and will miss at least the first four games. Very quietly, Wilhite last year compiled the best average per carry in the league, with the exception of Freeman McNeil of the Jets, who was the league's leading rusher. So Wilhite was a valuable man, and they're without him. Not a bad second place. Crucial down here. Can't get in that third down a long yardage situation. This will be second and five. Paros and Winder are the backs. Paros and Poole have been bringing in the plays from the sideline. Here's Winder. He gets three. Lawrence Taves makes the tackle. 
Bob, I'll make the comment that the Pittsburgh Steelers defense has got to get a feeling that they're playing against the Minnesota over Cleveland. 7 nothing. One yard run by Ted Brown. Dan Radakovich is now the offensive line coach of the Denver Broncos. Used to be here in Pittsburgh. Denver has now gone to a lot more traps than they used to run. And so therefore, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense has got to be feeling for playing their own team. St. Louis over New Orleans, 7 nothing. 11-yard pass. Lomax to March. Third and two now from the 15. Out of the shotgun, Elway with loads of time. But he's sacked and loses the football. Lambert hit him. And we'll have to wait for them to unpile, but it looks like Tom Beasley, number 65, has got the football. be right today. This is something of a carryover from the last preseason game against Minnesota when Elway was 11 of 32, had three intercepted, was sacked five times, and fumbled three times. Lambert will jar it loose, and Tom Beasley, number 65, will jump on it. The Denver threat goes by the boards. The Steelers have the ball at their 20. The very end of the play, 58 Jack Lambert by Ken Lanier. Watch Elway take his hand off the ball right there. Rookie mistake. Keep both hands on that football when you're around in the traffic in the NFL. Keep both hands on it, and then they can't just knock it away from you. That he'll learn. Stout will throw on first down. It's deflected. Nothing but white shirts in the vicinity, but nobody can come up with it. Greg Hawthorne was the intended target, and Steve Busick, one of the inside linebackers, knocked it away. Music number 58. Trump, you made the point that both these clubs, in an era of bigger linebackers, still feature light, quick linebackers. Bob, I think that's the direction of defense in the NFL. I don't think we have a linebacker on the field today that weighs more than 228 pounds. They can all run, cover backs out of the backfield, and are very, very tough hitters. Second and ten, Stout rolling left. Got some room to run, gets six, maybe seven before going out of bounds. Stout has played in a total of just 15 NFL games, counting this one, even though this is his seventh year. He actually qualified for a pension and picked up a couple of Super Bowl rings without ever taking a snap in a regular game, just waiting behind Terry Bradshaw, who had elbow surgery this past March and is out for at least the first four games and probably longer. Just the second start for Stout. His first one was very impressive. In 1980 at Cleveland, he threw for over 300 yards, but they lost the game. Three. Lots of time and a target. Was it a clean catch? No. Hawthorne thinks so, but the referee doesn't agree. Thrown behind him, and that's a that's a completion that should be easy to make. Hawthorne ran a very good pattern. Stout, I think, was just a little bit anxious to get the ball out of his hands. Trump early on, it appears that the Steelers are exploiting the middle on those 10 and 12 yard routes pretty well. Well, Denver is coming in with five and six defensive backs and dropping eight guys in coverage, and the only spot open, basically, Bob, is underneath the linebacker coverage. Zach Thomas, number 82, the rookie, rather than the veteran great punt returner Rick Unter, is the deep man here. Colquitt's punt is relatively short. It's going to be good field position for Denver as Thomas gets out of bounds. game of cat and mouse early. Each team has been guilty of a turnover. Denver's going to set up at their own 40-yard line with six minutes and 43 seconds to play in the first quarter. For those wondering about the absence of Upchurch on the punt return team, he's perfectly healthy in that regard, and if it came down to it late in a game, Dan Reeves would use him. But Upchurch is really Reeves' only true deep threat as a wide receiver, and so he doesn't want to risk injury returning punts, so he's holding up Church back in that department and using the rookie Zach Thomas. Denver goes with two tight ends. Paul Egloff split wide to the bottom of the screen. Egloff comes in motion toward the ball. Winder cutting right, and he picks up perhaps three on first down. Lauren Taves and Rick Woods in on the tackle. Woods did not start at free safety, but he is sharing time with Ron Johnson. A flag down, and it's a hold against Denver. A quick check on the scoreboard. The Raiders go in front at Cincinnati on a one-yard run by who else? Marcus Allen. 
Houston counters with a field goal. 7-3 is the score in the first quarter in their game with Green Bay. And Baltimore goes in front of New England, 3-0. Maybe Frank Fisher's club will win one this year. Here's Jerry Seaman. Holding, holding, number 87. Right, one of the two tight ends in on the play, guilty of holding. Well, now the Denver offense has its work cut out for it. You're basically at the mercy of the defense. They can blitz two guys, they can blitz three guys. Now would be an excellent time for a screen pass, Bob. Keep the pressure off the quarterback. Bob Coors is in there, number 90 for Pittsburgh. Inside rusher. First and 20 from the 30. and Paros is drilled as a result. Gabe Rivera, first-round draft choice out of Texas Tech. Number 69 makes the stop. They've got an entirely new group for this series across the front. Rivera joined by Edmund Nelson, 64, and Keith Gary, 92. Ah, uh, Elway turned the wrong way. You can see the other running back going to his left. Elway was to turn to his left. Well, that, that happens in your first ball game. you got to get over those things, and you don't... You can't learn by sitting on the bench or doing that preseason. You got to be out here in amongst the big guys to learn how to do it right. Second and 21 from the 29. They pitch it to Nathan Poole, and Poole is snuffed out quickly. Tom Beasley making initial contact. It'll be third and about 20. Now you see what this situation has done, that holding penalty. Denver in a spot where they're, they're really restricted as to what they can do offensively, and now the game is dictated by the defense. They can bring in five and six defensive backs, and, and with Denver's inability to throw the football to the tight end, all you have to do is to double the outside receivers, and there's basically nobody to throw to. Preston 46 and Sammy Winder 23 are the backs. Elway needs 20. Unloads just as he's hit. It's deflected up in the air and drops incomplete. He didn't make the completion, but that's part of the mystique of John Elway. You can see him rush up the field. Now watch how quickly he gets this football off. Look at the coverage. Three deep, three underneath. Lambert barely gets a hand on it, but Elway with that ball held high, right up next to his ear, which is very close to the release point, is so quick to get it off. This guy has great fundamentals when he throws the football. For you young kids, watch how he gets that ball up high. Wham, it's gone. There is, that is something you simply cannot teach a quarterback. Either come to the game with it, or you don't have it. And that's part of the talent of John Elway. Keith Willis playing for the injured John Goodman, who's out with a sprained knee, hit Elway just as he released. Now on fourth and long, Prestige to kick again. The punt return man is Paul Skansky. Rookie out of Washington, fifth round draft choice, takes it at the 25 and to the 31-yard line. A 43-yard kick by Prestige and a six-yard return. Jim Ryan, number 50, got down there along with Rob Lytle on the coverage. We're still scoreless with four minutes and 44 seconds to play in quarter number one at Three Rivers. Now Cliff Stout back to work from the 31-yard line of Pittsburgh. Mentioned earlier that Stout has had only one previous NFL start. He threw for 310 yards in a 27-26 loss to the Browns in 1980. First down throwing. Abercrombie, a leaping catch, but he's out of bounds when he takes it of an athletic move nonetheless. I guess the question about Abercrombie is his past receiving ability in this his second year. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He just has to somehow gain the confidence of the quarterback spot. He's back there with Franco Harris and Franco Harris for the years he's been in the league. Someone has to take the pressure off Franco Harris. Abercrombie is the man to do it. How good a blocker is he, Abercrombie? Fair. Fair at best. He doesn't compare with the likes of Rocky Blyer a few years ago, blocking for Franco, nor does he compare with Sidney Thornton. But pure athletic ability, Abercrombie is something to behold. Stallworth left, Hawthorne right. On second and ten, it's Harris. Up 
couple of yards, maybe three. William Andrews takes a 23-yard pass from Steve Bartkowski into the end zone. The kick is missed. 6-0 Falcons over the Bears. Now you see the change in the NFL. Third down and about seven and six different people come in for the Denver Broncos. An entirely new situation now for the Pittsburgh Steeler offense. Three wide receivers, tight end Franco Harris, one running back behind. Blitz. And they got him. Barney Chavis was the first man there, I think, but he had plenty of help. There's Chavis, number 79, in his 11th year in the National Football League. Now, generally, teams will have hot receivers. He's called a blitz outlet. And when a man blitzes by him, he's going to turn his head to the quarterback so there's an outlet. There was simply no one to throw to there. Cole quit. A two-step punter. Never has had one blocked in the NFL. Thomas juggles it. It's still loose. It's out of bounds and it belongs to Denver. Louie Wright was the man who scooped it up, but it was going out anyway, and it would have been Bronco ball under those circumstances. A 45-yard kick by Colquitt, and the rookie, Zach Thomas, says, uh-oh. I'm looking at being the goat here, but nobody can find the handle. We've got a penalty against the Pittsburgh Steelers, illegal man downfield before the punt, but the bad news is for Zach Thomas is all he does for this team is return punts and kickoffs, and he has got to do that job. Dan Reeves wants punt returner to simply make the good catch. He wants possession of the football, nothing really fancy unless he needs it. Then he brings it up church. Pittsburgh's going to have to punt it again. Now how would you like to be Zach Thomas? Sitting back there thinking, I gotta catch this one. And knowing they've got one of the game's best. In Ellsworth Downfield, number 90, Kicky Team. In Rick Upchurch, who already holds the record for most yards on punt returns in NFL history, He's returned eight punts for touchdowns. That ties him with Jack Christensen for the league mark. So with Upchurch always there and at the ready, Thomas has got to shine if he wants to keep that job. Coors was the guilty party on the last play. Now Pittsburgh is tired. Ten of their 11 men just went through a 42-yard sprint. Thomas signals fair catch and takes it at the 43-yard line, so the net gain on that exchange is 23 yards for the Broncos. of South Carolina State have got to be happy today. Zach Thomas is from there. Donnie Shell in the ballgame from there. Henry Odom, rookie kick returner for the Steelers. Barney Chavis, who got in on the sack a moment ago of Cliff Stout, all from South Carolina State. Bob, a comment for the Denver Bronco offense. Throw it now. Throw it right now on first down. When whatever Pittsburgh does the most of, they're going to do it on this down. First down. pressure he unloads oh and the battle is won by rick upchurch Wayne woodruff was right there and they each had a hand on it and upchurch yanked it away forget the catch once again the athletic ability of john elway going straight back he does not set his feet throws the ball on a line 25 yards anticipating where upchurch will be for a completion write that one down you don't coach that bob Gabe Rivera, the Steelers' number one pick, almost had him. But Elway, off balance, connects. I have a feeling for the rest of his career there's going to be a lot of people say almost had him. Elway's numbers at Stanford. He threw for 77 touchdowns in his career there. Lots of time this time on first down. He wants it all for Upchurch. But it's taken away by Donnie Shell near the goal line. I believe Trump is going to be spotted at the one, which is the only bad news for the Steelers. Their backs will be to the wall. But Donnie Shell, a 10-year veteran, tags Elway with his first NFL interception. This ball is underthrown. 
I'm not sure he would have ever gotten it to Rick Upchurch, but there is a tendency for young quarterbacks, Bob, regardless of how talented they are, to make every completion. Watch Shell last year with five interceptions, tied along with Woodruff and Ken Riley for the lead in the AFC. Great position player, but you can see Upchurch had to stop for that. But I repeat, the mistake there is simply trying to make every pass a completion. Once again, part of the growing pains of coming into the NFL. Franco just trying to wedge out some room, perhaps a yard to the two. Franco Harris at age 33, the second youngest, second oldest, I should say, running back in the NFL. John Riggins, last year's Super Bowl hero with the Redskins, is 34. In 11 seasons prior to this campaign in the NFL, Franco Harris has missed only nine games. Amazingly durable. Pittsburgh now with three wide receivers. Stout from the end zone on a short drop. Hawthorne makes the catch, but only for three yards. Louis Wright quickly drags him down. Bob Swenson almost made the interception on that. He had his back turned to the quarterback. That ball went right by his hand. Two guys excellent in combination. Swenson up front. Louis right behind. The last two times Denver has gotten the ball, it has been beyond their own 40-yard line. Unless Pittsburgh gets a first down here, the same will apply again. In a scoreless game, you begin to feel if there's any advantage at all, it belongs to Denver at this point. Real position, yes. Hawthorne makes the catch and slips away. Hawthorne for a first down at the 24. 18 yards on the pickup. That play certainly got him off the hook. It appeared that Denver went to the prevent defense between Smith on top of Gratishar. Hawthorne, another very, very talented player that they're simply trying to work into the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. This has in the past been such a such a patterned offense with Franco Harris carrying it, Lynn Swan catching it, John Stallworth catching it. Now they've got to find new stars. We're in the last half minute of the first quarter. Franco for one very tough yard out to the 25 in the grasp of Randy Gratishar. Don Latimer, number 72, also there. Denver also doing an excellent job holding Pittsburgh to very few yards rushing on that first down, which seems to be the secret to win in the NFL. Keep them out of that second long defense. That'll do it for the first 15 minutes of football this 1983 season. No score at Three Rivers. Elway with his first taste of NFL, just along with Bob Trumpy at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh from the 25-yard line of the Steelers. It'll be second down and nine. Steelers with the 7-4 edge. Yeah, but uh, only three down, three-yard average for first down. Very indeed. Fumble. Squirts back. Rulon Jones was there for Denver. Let's see if he's the guy who comes up with it. He is. Got it. got blistered, absolutely blistered. And that's the second time that Franco has fumbled today and the second time that Rulon Jones has recovered. Historically, a very, very slow starter. Last year, he rushed for 100 yards against the Dallas Cowboys. It was the best opening day he ever had in his career. Watch once again how quick the Denver defense is there. Good blitz on the inside. Tom Jackson makes the contact. Rulon Jones, the recovery, and once again, great field position for the Denver Broncos. If they can't get it in here, they got real problems today. Elway needs to take them 20 yards to the end zone. Winder cuts inside. First down, first and goal, all the way down to the two-yard line. the Pittsburgh Steeler play. Once again, I believe the influence of Dan Radakovich, former offensive line here, underneath handoff to the running back. You see the offside guard pull, 63, does an excellent job, cuts up underneath Shell. Winder's got some speed. That is a monster of a play against a very, very good defense against the rush to pop one through there like that so clean. 
Chuck Noel watching from the sideline. It's hard to believe that a fellow could have as much success in American sports or Super Bowl victories and be less of a household name and a household face than Noel. Extremely low profile despite the great achievements. Two tight ends, Egloff and Wright, on first and goal from the two-yard line. Winder is smacked, spins off, close to a touchdown but not quite. Woodruff, who made the touchdown saving tackle a moment ago, also hit him first, along with Lambert on that play. You, the picture of Lambert, he missed the tackle. Very unusual for Jack Lambert. Winder was able to get underneath of Lambert's arms and turn a loss into a game. Less than a yard separates the Broncos from the end zone. Two minutes have been played in the second quarter. So far, scoreless. Winder sticks his nose in, but there are plenty of black shirts waiting for him. It'll be third and goal. Robin Cole was there. Ron Johnson, Gary Dunn. This is the stuff that the legend of the Steel Curtain defense here in Pittsburgh was made of. Stopping teams with four downs inside the two-yard line through the decade of the 70s was something that was very commonplace for visiting teams here in Three River Stadium. The Steelers were number one in the NFL last year in defense against the rush. They were relatively weak in defense against the pass, but they held their opponents to less than 100 yards a game on the ground. Harrison Winder, the backs. It's Winder again. And he's there. Touchdown, Denver. So the rookie from southern Mississippi makes it 6 nothing. Elway did not have to throw a pass on that drive. Winder carried the ball every time. Good job by the right side of the Denver Bronco offensive line. Excellent block by Peros. This gives Winder a small little opening there, and he's able to squirt through for the Broncos' first six points of this 1983 season. And that's something by itself. They have not scored an awful lot of points in the preseason. In fact, they won three games and were outscored. They only had one loss. Steve DeBerg is the holder. Rich Carlos will kick. It's 7-0 Broncos. So the fumble recovery by Rulon Jones after Franco Harris coughed it up leads to the game's first TD with 12.38 to play in the half. Carlos, the barefooted kicker with Henry Odom, number 44, waiting at the five-yard line of the Steelers. Carlos backs him to the end zone. He fumbles. He picks it back up. To the 25-yard line, so it looked like it might be a whole lot worse than that for Odom and the Steelers. Turns it into a decent return. Pittsburgh now must get something going offensively. They have really sputtered. They've had a couple of uh, bright spots, but look at the first down average. The Steelers only three yards in seven plays, seven first down plays. That means they're second and seven, and once again at the mercy of the Denver Bronco defense. That has got to improve. The Broncos not much better at 4.2, but two turnovers have certainly helped them. Stout from the 25-yard line. Right into traffic, and he finds Benny Cunningham for the first down. Steve Busick and Randy Gratishar, along with Mike Parton, are among those who wrapped him up. But not before a gain of at least 11. Let's see where they'll put it down. Let's call it a 12-yard pickup on the completion. Seven fifty to play in the first half. Seven nothing Denver. Stout fakes the give to Abercrombie. One corks one over the middle. Man wide open. It's John Stallworth with the three hundredth catch of his NFL career. Good play action fake by Cliff Stout. Held the linebackers to the line of scrimmage. We got a flag on Pittsburgh. They're going to bring it back. Nevertheless, excellent execution. Good hand fake to Abercrombie. And then he had the time to wait for Stallworth to come open. So 
Stallworth will have to wait officially for catch number 300. Jerry Seaman is going to walk it off. Lynn Swan is the all-time leading receiver, 336 catches, followed by L.B. Nickel at 329 in Pittsburgh history. Stallworth has a chance to pass them both. Holding, holding, number 66, offense. Ted Peterson and Bob, I make this comment, I'm very surprised that the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line is having problems against the Denver Bronco defensive line. Take nothing away from Denver's defense. It is outstanding. The Pittsburgh's offensive line, great pass protectors. First and 20, Franco makes the catch. Stutter steps out to the 32-yard line for a pickup of about seven on the play. Bob Swenson made the tackle. Von Shaman connects from 32. Miami jumps in front of Buffalo. Rob Carpenter's touchdown run, followed by a missed point after, gives the Giants a 6-3 lead over the Rams in New Jersey. And Minnesota lengthens their lead on the Browns to 10 to nothing on a Benny Ricardo field goal from 22 yards. Detroit has a safety in there as Doug English tackled Jerry Goldstein in the end zone, and they lead Tampa Bay 5-0. As the ball arrived on an excellent defensive play. The pass was delivered perfectly by Stout. Looked like Steve Foley. I think it was Mike Harden who made the You're right. It's Harden play. first and Foley got there late. It's Harden who made the real play, Trump. He covered an awful lot of ground in a very short distance. Sweeney was wide open, had to wait on the ball ever so slightly. Allowed Harden to make up about six yards. And once again, now Denver comes in with an entirely different set of defensive people. Third down, and about, what, 15? Three wide receivers in. Stout steps up, uncorks one. He's got a man open, but he overthrew him. Sweeney was the target again, and he had perhaps a step and a half on Harden. Now, wait a minute. This is not supposed to happen. Third down and 15, defensive coaches Joe Collier tell defensive backs, don't let anybody get behind you. Well, it looks like Sweeney comes from the inside. Harden just misjudged his speed. And if this ball is on the money, it's six points. All quit the kick. Thomas retreating to the 14-yard line to field it. back across the 25. It's a 56-yard kick by Craig Colquitt, who had to battle with John Goodson in training camp to win his kicking job back. Elway and company have a 7-0 lead, and we're coming right back. Elway's clubs, despite all of Elway's achievements, only went 15 and 18 in the next three years, never went to a bowl game. He was not surrounded by excellent teammates. The same may be true initially here in Denver as he goes to the air on first down. Woodruff, intended for Watson. You take a look at the Denver roster, they don't know if they have a tight end who can catch the ball consistently. Will Hyde is hurt among their backs. Glassick is hurt on their offensive line, which is a question mark. So Elway, through no fault of his own, might not take them to the promised land right away. But one of the good things about the NFL is that every year you get new blood, and he is a great cornerstone to build a franchise around. I was fortunate enough to be on the field the first time Ken Anderson took the snap from center, and they've certainly built a good football team around him. They've got time. They keep him healthy. He has the credentials and the ability to really turn a football franchise around. A flag goes down, and so does Sammy Winder as he comes across the 30 in the grasp of Jack Lambert. The Raiders jump on the Bengals in Cincy by a score of 14 to nothing. Cincinnati with a troubled offseason, drug problems surrounding some players, defections to the USFL. Miami's lead is 6 nothing on a pair of Von Schaumann field goals. By the way, both Raider touchdowns at Cincinnati on one-yard runs by Marcus Allen. Green Bay, 14-10 over Houston in the second at Houston. New England on a Steve Grogan to Steve starring pass with the extra point missed leads 6-3 over Baltimore there have been a lot of PATs missed on this first weekend. Penalty against Pittsburgh 
five-yard penalty. I believe they had a defensive lineman, Tom Beasley, lined up in the neutral zone. Second down and five. Here's Winders had a very busy first half. Down for a loss, shy of the 30-yard line, with Ron Johnson on top of it. Let's check with NFL 83. Well, Bob Costas, you mentioned New England score a moment ago. Here it is. Steve Grogan bombs away 73 yards to a rookie from McNeese State, Stephen Starring. But as you mentioned, the point extra attempt was missed. So New England leads it 6-3. to three. Back to you, Bob. Just under 10 minutes remaining in this first half at Pittsburgh and a player down, Trump. Someone from Pittsburgh in the last play that Denver just ran, that underneath handoff suite. Oh, it's... I beg your pardon, it's someone from Denver. Same play they ran for the touchdown. Cooper was the injured Denver player, heretofore perhaps best known as John Elway's roommate. He was a second round draft choice. They took another offensive lineman, Chris Hinton, from Northwestern in the first round. And Hinton, as you know, was part of the deal with Baltimore, which brought Elway to Denver. Sean Hollingsworth from Angelo State, also a rookie, replaces Cooper at the left guard spot. We'll watch that spot closely. Third down eight. From the shotgun, Elway. Good. On the button. Oh. The catch is made by Clint Sampson. His first NFL reception, a rookie from San Diego State, number 84, and a gain of 17. We got a flag down. So that's going to be negated. Chuck Knoll, got a look at him on the Pittsburgh sideline. He's had to do some retooling here. Jerry Seaman's announcement. Use a hand. Number 40. Some problems with the official's microphone, as you may have noticed early on here. We apologize for that. We started to mention Chuck Knoll and some of the changes he's had to make here. There are still nine players on this roster who played on all four Super Bowl champions, but there are 23 players with two years or less of NFL experience on the Steeler team. Now third and 18, Elway ducks out of some trouble. But ultimately, down he goes. Beasley, number 65, cut him down. Excellent job by the Pittsburgh secondary because Elway was looking and looking and nothing opened up. Well, I think John Elway would have been better off going for the completion. I think he was looking for the first down yardage, and at times you just can't get that done. Holding his arm there down to his side. I hope it's all right. A very valuable commodity. I notice also he plays without a flak jacket. He, got, he either landed on his elbow or got hit on the elbow. And believe me, there'll be a covey of doctors looking at that arm in just a second. Scancy fields it. Paul Scancy is near midfield. Before the whistle blows, his forward progress got right about at the 50-yard line. This is the best field position that the Steelers have enjoyed upon regaining possession. Elway looks to be ship shape on the sideline, and the Broncos have that 7 0 lead with 8.45 to play just in case DeBerg gets warm. You notice the kind of lumpy look in the back of Steve DeBerg's jersey. During preseason, he got hit in the throat. Lost his voice, it's barely whispering. He's got a microphone and an amplifier just in case he has to come into the game and bark out signals, or more appropriately, whisper out signals, which will be amplified. On first down, Stout connects with Sweeney. Louis Wright brings him down, and some hard feelings develop. Tom Jackson comes over as an enforcer to shove Sweeney out of the way. It's a gain of 12, and Sweeney's been getting open pretty consistently, Trump. Replacing Lynn Swan, which is a tough job. These are two intimidating type football teams. 
Sweeney does an excellent job of coming back to the ball, and I think Sweeney is mad at number 58. Busey kind of slapped him on the head there a little bit, but as the officials call it, incidental contact, uh, contact, first and 10 Pittsburgh. That phrase was incidental contact. We knew what you meant. Thank you. 7.50 to play in the first half. Pittsburgh down seven, but driving. 37-yard line of Denver. The fake to Abercrombie. The bullet over the middle is intercepted. Picked off by Steve Foley. There's a flag down on the play. Harden comes up with the ball off the lateral, and Harden is dancing around in Pittsburgh territory, changing direction. This is probably going to come back, but it looks awfully pretty. Harden is in the end zone, and now we'll let the officials sort it out. It's going to be pass interference, Steve Foley. Although we were led to believe that both people have a chance to go to the football. Both offensive and defensive football player can go to the football. But contact, just as the ball was about to get to Sweeney, by Steve Foley. And interesting, on the ground at about the left 26 or 27 yard line is Craig Wolfley, a very important member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Offensive guard is down and appears to be seriously injured. It's going to be against Denver. But it did appear that they were both going for the football. That's why Dan Reeves is complaining so vehemently. Reeves' club went 10 and 6 in his first year, then suffered through 2 and 7 in the strike season. Once again, we'll see if we can see the contact. There's the bump. Good call by the officials. I don't believe anybody has a complaint from Denver. Number 31. They called 31, but it was on 43. Steve now that Foley. just adds to Reeves' complaint, he's over there saying, hey, you don't even know what ball player you're talking about. Doesn't change the interference. There's Wolfley up. He seems to be healthy. That was a good call by the officials. Steve Foley, free safety playing center field back there. It's his job to get to the football, but just a split second off the timing. That is a good call, Dan. When you look at it in the films, you'll say, well, you're right. It sets the Steelers up at the Bronco 19. 7.24 on the second quarter clock. Franco Valone set back looks right, then throws left over the middle to Sweeney. A flag goes down, but Sweeney has the ball, so if it's pass interference, it's academic. I think now we've got illegal motion by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think he turned up, Calvin Sweeney turned up field too soon. The illegal procedure, Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the shame in that is Calvin Sweeney was coming back to the formation, looking right straight at the quarterback. right motion number 85 that's what it was Calvin Sweeney turned up the field too soon there have been turnovers and penalties galore in this first half Denver leading at 7 and up first and 15 from the 24 Abercrombie Finds some room, gets to the 19, gain of five. Cincinnati gets a 38-yard field goal from Chris Barr. 14-3, they still trail in the second quarter. No, 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 Chris Barr kicks for Oakland, or for Los Angeles. That's got to be Jim Breach, excuse me. You are absolutely right, although the card said Chris Barr. I should have known better. Jim Breach is a kicker for uh, Cincinnati. 10-7, Minnesota over Cleveland. yard line. Off Sweeney's hands and intercepted by Jackson. Tom Jackson has the ball. Flags fly. Clip. Jackson down at the 15. Clip on number 50 of the Denver Broncos. Jim Ryan, but 
I cannot believe the turnovers. Well, this ball is catchable. Sweeney has certainly been the hot target. That ball is catchable. Went right through his hands. Jackson in the right spot at the right time. And you can see the clip right there, I believe. It was on Benny Cunningham by Mr. Ryan. Watch right there. Block after the interception. Oh. Number 51, intercepting team. 51, Bob Swenson. I apologize to Mr. Ryan, but nevertheless, the clip stands. The clock stops with six minutes and 24 seconds to play in the second quarter. Denver turns the Steelers away and takes the ball back at their own five. First ball like this kicks up a tremendous amount of dust. Marcus Allen for the Raiders, last year's leading NFL scorer, off to a big start again this year. We'll have details on NFL 83 on our halftime report. Each club has had their chances. The only one which has been cashed in, Denver took over on the 20 following a Franco Harris fumble and a recovery by Rulon Jones. And four carries by Sammy Winder later, they were in the end zone. That's it, 7-0. Now 95 yards from the Steeler end zone. Rick Parros carries, the third-year man from Utah State. Gets two, perhaps three yards on first down. Lambert and Taves made the defensive play. Bob, Sean Hollingsworth still in it. Offensive left guard replacing Cooper, who was out with a, an ankle sprain. We don't know how serious, but Hollingsworth still in there. He is a rookie out of Angelo State, and that is a critical injury to the Denver offensive line. They're not very deep there to begin with. Good luck, young man. There he is, number 73. A while ago on the sideline, DeBerg was warming up because Elway took a shot on his elbow. Denver had the ball, but obviously always okay. Egloff was dancing around, a moment of confusion in the flag undoubtedly against Denver. And the fellow we were talking about, Hollingsworth, number 73, is evidently the guilty party, the rookie. And we apologize for the microphone. You can see Hollingsworth, 73, a little anxious. That's understandable. Aha! It was Chris Barr who kicked the field goal from 38 yards out, and it's 17-0 rather than 14-3. The Raiders pouring it on Cincinnati. Nathan Poole is the lone setback. He gets the ball running out of the end zone, and he bursts right up the middle for a first down. Nathan Poole to the 23-yard line. Excellent call by Dan Reeves, tackled by Ron Johnson, 17 yards on the carry. It appeared that Elway was going to roll out the pass, and you'll see him roll right. Poole takes a couple of steps. Excellent misdirection play. Good blocks up front, too. Dave's on the ground. Boy, that's a big play. Gets them underneath, uh, out underneath the shadow of their own goalpost. Trump, we saw that score a moment ago with the Raiders, 17-0 over the Bengals. As I recall, the lone loss. Elway wants it all. He's pumping deep and broken up by Woodruff, intended for Watson. Loss that the Raiders absorbed in the regular season last year came against the Bengals at Cincinnati, so they're getting their revenge today. And they shut Marcus Allen out. He had eight carries for no yards. Elway's stats certainly not impressive, but I'm sure he'd rather win the football game, regardless of his personal stats, than never throw an incompletion on the afternoon. During the NFL 83 pregame show, we took a look at the performance of some other noted quarterbacks, quarterbacks who were much ballyhooed coming out of college, the Namaths, the Bradshaws, and those are the two guys that Elway has been likened to most frequently during the preseason, and they broke in relatively slowly, and their clubs didn't reach heights until several years later. Nathan Poole carrying again. Steve Grove.
Brogan to Stanley Morgan for a 50-yard touchdown. New England over Baltimore, 13-3. It's in the second quarter at Foxborough. Now the situation substitution by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Six new people came into the ball game. Four-man rush by Pittsburgh. Two linebackers, five defensive backs. On third down eight. Elway fires another long one, but there's nobody in the vicinity. Good choice. Good choice. You know, I, I, I realize that Dan Reeves comes out of the Dallas Cowboy offense. It seems to me that in third down and long yardage situations, when you go to that shotgun, you give carte blanche to the defensive line. They can rush five guys. Chances are, 90% of the time, you're going to throw the ball. I wonder if they put Elway up underneath center in third down in long yardage situations, it if it would change the defensive front that the Pittsburgh Steelers would use. There's Scansu, the rookie from Washington, waiting to kick by Prestige. Good kick, drives him back to the 23. And doesn't get to the 30. 54-yard kick by Luke Prestige and Nathan Poole playing on the special teams as well as from scrimmage got down there to make the tackle. A return of five and NFL 83 is coming up at halftime. Len Berman, Bill McAtee and company get you updated on all the scores. Not very productive, would you agree? Certainly not in keeping with the way the Pittsburgh Steelers have played in past years. I'll say this for Stout, though, Trump. Except for the one time when he overthrew Sweeney, who was wide open, on what might have been a long touchdown. His throws have been on the money. Some have been broken up by good defensive plays. At least one has been dropped. But he's been accurate. He wants Sweeney on this one. He overthrows it. right on the coverage and Cliff Stout calls his own plays and that was a hook and go by Calvin Sweeney which is probably on the last page of the playbook of the Pittsburgh Steelers watch this pattern he goes to Louis Wright stops and then heads up the field that to me is a sign of desperation trying to get it all back in a hurry when the Pittsburgh Steeler offense I believe is a superior offense they've only given the ball to Franco Harris I think twice and gone away from the run Abercrombie has five yards. Steve Busick makes the tackle. Rulon Jones also there. Stout's got to do a better job of calling the plays. Here comes Frank Pollard in the ballgame. Number 30, maybe with the play from the sideline. Nope, it's Calvin Sweeney coming in. His stats are very, very misleading. 7 of 15 for over 80 yards. But it does appear, and this might be because it's just his second start ever. He's trying to get it all, and he's trying to get it all in a hurry. Defensive backs, Denver. Five yards needed for Pittsburgh. Sideline to Hawthorne, very close. I think he's got it. Ball's going to be at about the 40, and it will be a Pittsburgh first down. Roger Jackson, number 28, in his second year from Bethune Cookman, made the defensive play, but too late. Excellent call. That one came from the bench. Abercrombie comes back in, and he just relayed another play to Cliff Stout. Chicago leading Atlanta 10 to 6. Falcons had led 6 0. Then McMahon hit Marjoram for eight yards and a touchdown. Bob Thomas, a 29 yard field goal. 10 6 Bears in the second at Chicago. Stout rolling left off the face. Pointing toward a blocker to help him clear the way, but he didn't need it. Sticks out of bounds. Got another first down on the play. Picked up 11 to the 49-yard line of Denver. Now that to me is a little better line of thinking. You cannot be impatient in this game. Try to find something that will work and work consistently. 
And so far, it appears the Pittsburgh Steelers are searching. Now, this is a Cliff Stout called play. No player came from the sideline. Another first down pass. Caught by Benny Cunningham at the 35-yard line. And that has worked. That's about the third time that Benny Cunningham has been in a dead spot in the zone between two 34 linebackers for a first down completion. Excellent choice. Moving down toward two minutes to play in the first half. 7-0 Denver. Gain of 13 on the play. Stallworth left, Sweeney right. Abercrombie. Abercrombie curling over the middle and then taking it down to the 15-yard line. Bob, great job there by Cliff Stout. Look to the right. Calvin Sweeney was the receiver. He was covered. Came back and hit the secondary receiver. Abercrombie up the field. They get 21 yards. That brings us to the two-minute warning with the Steelers threatening to tie it. Hi. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Now the most important play here for the Pittsburgh Steelers as you watch Stout Malone talk with Chuck Noll on the headset. Greg Hawthorne behind them, number 27, is to simply hang on to the football. They've been down here before, and a fumble, and Denver gets new life. Malone's thoughts are concerning there's Anderson the kicker Gary Anderson who was just outstanding last year in his rookie season for Syracuse I wonder what Malone's thoughts are about Elway Malone a former number one draft choice himself out of Arizona State that's the Steeler brain trust there Set in there good. A little play action. And threw back across. Hawthorne is the guy they're trying to work in at wide receiver. Was drafted originally as a running back. And in an effort to uh, take some pressure off John Stallworth, they use Hawthorne as a wide receiver would like to do so a great deal. Abercrombie and Franco Harris are the running backs. Just across the five. Hawthorne in motion. Franco gets the pitch. He's there. Touchdown. For Franco Harris, career touchdown number 94. He moves out of a tie with Jim Taylor and into fourth place on the all-time touchdown scored list behind Jim Brown, who holds the record at 126, Lenny Morrow has 113, and Don Hudson, the legendary pass receiver of the Packers, who scored 105. 94th career touchdown for Franco. Anderson ties the game at seven. It's been for Pittsburgh to run the ball throughout this first half. This was entirely too easy. Hawthorne comes in motion. Just a simple pitch. Good job up front. Untouched. Into the end zone. Louis right on the tackle. But not until six points are scored. Let's watch Abercrombie. He gets a great block up front on Steve Foley. Cuts his legs out from underneath him. There's no one there for support. Anderson to kick it off for the Steelers and this kid from Syracuse is a story hit 10 of 12 field goals last year five of five between 40 and 49 yards in college with the orange men he never missed a point after touchdown made 72 in a row and yet he was waived by Buffalo after they took him in the seventh round of the draft last year Pittsburgh picked him up on waivers and what an acquisition he was yards deep in the end zone. Will bring it out. And Mike busted. Zach Thomas still on 
on his feet and out to the 39-yard line. Well, that atones for the fumble. That's an excellent return. And it also comes at a very, very good time. Now with very little time left, 102 in the first half. Let's see how Elway and company works in the two-minute drill. They have not thrown the ball at the tight end. He's completed but one pass on the day. I believe he's thrown eight. Look at there. See the difference in the second quarter? 6.6 first down yardage average. Up church right, Watson left. In trouble, he jumps it. Steelers want a flag, and there it is. The two white shirts he threw it in the direction of were not eligible receivers. But underneath the pile was Rick Perros, number 24. They're still going to call intentional grounding, which is 10 yards and the loss of down. The key on intentional grounding, did you throw it away to avoid loss of yardage? If you're in no imminent danger of being sacked, then you can throw the ball up into row 12 if you want to. But he was about to be sacked on the play by Bob Coors. He dumped it to avoid loss of yardage, intentional grounding call. I said he'd thrown eight passes, one of six now. time with our technical problems it's a pantomime by Jerry Seaman but we know you get the idea and always getting the idea as well a very difficult baptismal for him here in the first half and he falls down off the snap just for good measure Gary Dunn and Mike Merriweather arrive on the scene I'll tell you what caused that. The two defensive tackles of the Pittsburgh Steelers were really up on the football. There was obviously a game on the snap of the ball by the two defensive tackles. One of the guards, in its effort to get set up, I think the center steps on it. Billy Bryant puts his foot right on Elway's foot and knocks him down. He trips him. That was caused by those two defensive tackles right up on the ball. I wonder if he's saying, hey, Dan. This is the way it was at Stanford. They're hoping for a storybook finish in, in Denver. Just to show you how much attention this young man has created there, there are more, there were more rooms booked for the press covering John Elway in his debut than there were for the football team here in Pittsburgh. Speaking of quarterbacks, a couple who are already established as among the game's best will be on display in the second half of our doubleheader. Most of you will see Nick Enberg and Merlin Olson calling the action to Jets and Richard Todd at San Diego against Dan Fouts and company. Others will see Seattle at Kansas City. I don't think the word hysteria is an exaggeration to describe the reaction to the arrival of Elway in Denver. Early in preseason, six obscure players were cut. TV sportscaster greeted that development by saying, well, at least they can tell their grandchildren that they worked out, they practiced with Elway. And maybe someday they will be telling that story, depending upon how things turn out. Of course, football fans are impatient. I repeat. This young man is a great cornerstone for a franchise. If they can keep him healthy and build around him, there is a very bright future for the Denver Broncos. You can't judge this man's ability on one play. I would expect a blitz here. Even though it's third down and long, I'd expect a blitz here. Third and very long. Trump at each 26. Trouble with the snap. He gives it to Winder. Gain of little consequence, a flag flies after the whistle had blown. That's going to be a first down. There was an elbow thrown in somebody's face. Bad choice by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Personal foul, Pittsburgh. I believe that's 15 yards and carries an automatic first down. And comes at a most inopportune time from Chuck Knowles' perspective especially because their field goal kicker, Rich Carlos, is a great, long field goal kicker. And it gives Denver new life. 
first down, can, says Jerry Seaman. See if we can read lips here. That's Jack Lambert, number 58. It's right at the end of the play. That right elbow, right to the head. Well, this is an intimidating football team. Jack Lambert, eight straight Pro Bowl appearances, tying a mark for linebackers. Shotgun, look for the blitz. Here it is. Elway escapes, but not the second time. Keith Willis smothered him. Another flag is down. We got a conference, and there appears to be a flag over on the sideline. Now, one point I want to make about the Pittsburgh Steeler defensive lineman. They have six guys who can play and play at any time. Let's hear what the call is. There is no infraction on the way. Number 58, the quarterback was out of the pocket. Consequently, there's no illegal contact. Oh, I see. They were saying illegal contact on Dave Preston on the sideline, but because Elway became a runner, there was no threat to pass. The point about the Pittsburgh Steeler defensive linemen, all of those guys won 40s under 4'8". That is exceptional speed for guys at 260 or 65 pounds. Keith Willis runs 4'7 at 260 pounds. They can run around most offensive linemen and chase down quarterbacks. That, too, is the wave of the future in professional football. Gabriel Rivera, 290 pounds, runs 4-7 in the 40. They lose 17 on the sack by Willis. And now they want to keep it on the ground. Nathan Poole, was he ever smacked by Mel Blunt? Blunt today becomes only the second Steeler in history to play in 14 seasons. Ernie Stautner was the first between 1950 and 63. And Terry Bradshaw will become the third when he gets back on the active roster. We're just going to let it run out. Pittsburgh has timeouts remaining, but they elect not to use them. Tied at seven we go to the locker room. I think that's a surprise to most people. A lot of people felt that the Pittsburgh Steelers would flat run over John Elway and the Denver Broncos, but turnovers by the Steelers will allow Denver, Denver to stay in the game. Well, the Steelers racked up 19 quarterback sacks in preseason, including eight in their last preseason game, a win over the Eagles. And they have put some serious pressure on Elway today. And yet the Broncos come out of it no worse than tied at halftime. Defenses. Uh, Pittsburgh has really put a lot of pressure on Elway. He still only completed one pass. For Clips down in the Pittsburgh Steelers, they really haven't put anything offensively together. But John Elway is still the story. Whether he makes it or not, succeeds or not, he is the story. The most celebrated draft choice. Early blitz. Just missed his first completion there. We'll watch Lambert once again get to him. This is when Elway fumbles. You see the mistake. He takes his hand off the ball. Ball is loose. Recovered by Gary Dunn. But look at the ability this young man has. Going straight back. Throws the ball 30 yards on a line to Rick Upchurch for a completion. And Denver's only scores. Sammy Winder gets down to about the one-yard line. They finally pop it in after three tries. Winder again. And we'll be back to Pittsburgh 7-7 after this. Broncos will get the ball to start the second half. Gary Anderson, who pretty consistently puts it at the goal line or into the end zone to kick for Pittsburgh. Zach Thomas, number 82, and Steve Wilson, number 45 of the deep men. the story. Steve DeBerg starting the second half for the Denver Broncos. 
Getting the play from Dan Reeves. John Elway for the first half. One out of eight. Sacked four times. Threw an interception. That one completion. Rick Upchurch for 14 yards. Well, some have started better. Some have started worse, and some have not started at all. The question is, where are they when they peak? And it'll take a few years before we know that. So the bird comes in, his voice amplified by an amplifier which he's carrying on his back. You can see it protruding from the jersey, and a little microphone hooked to his helmet. He gives to Paros, and Paros gets a rude how do you do for a loss of five. Robin Cole was among those there. You can see that microphone swinging around the right side of DeBerg's face in a circle. That happened to him before when he was in San Francisco and was hoarse and they had to put a microphone on his face mask. So far, things have not changed. First snap for the Denver Broncos, second half, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense all over them. Now at the mercy of the defense, second and 13, blitzing down, all kinds of pressure everywhere. and the wide receivers are Watson in motion and upchurch to the right. They swing it to Egloff, one of the two tight ends, and down he goes almost immediately. Rick Woods, number 22, in his second year out of Boise State, fourth-round draft choice a year ago, makes the tackle. Those first-half stats are something to behold. Yards passing, minus. Total yards, 47. Score tied 7-7. Seven, seven. One of eight, Elway in his debut. Stout, 11 of 19. Look at the turnovers. The turnover resulted in the Denver Bronco touchdown. Shotgun, I would expect a blitz here. Third down, and they need 11. The bird, and he goes. Elway received the same treatment four times in the first half. DeBerg is initiated here on the opening series of the third quarter. Dunn 67, Beasley 65 did the damage. Now this is just an indication of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense from the shotgun. They're going to throw it. Dunn with an excellent move to get to the quarterback. A little spin move. Elway, excuse me, DeBerg did not have a chance. who had a good first half running. He's in his own end zone. Scancy is deep. The prospect of good field position for the Steelers. Scancy at the 45 into Denver territory at about the 43 of the Broncos. A 46-yard kick by Prestige, but a 12-yard return before Ken Woodard made the tackle for Denver. It's Pittsburgh's time. The Denver defense has been just as outstanding, except for allowing Calvin Sweeney open almost all over the field and a couple of pass receptions by Benny Cunningham. There hasn't been much that Pittsburgh's been able to do. Stout, another first down pass. That was par for the course in the first half. Broken up and nearly intercepted. Dennis Smith had a crack at it after Louis Wright made the defensive play. The target was Sweeney, number 85. Smith arriving on the scene late, thought he had a crack at picking it off. Sweeney has been very, very busy today. Obviously, the favorite of Cliff Stout. Sweeney from USC, 6'2", 190. He's in his fourth NFL season, was taken in the fourth round back in 1979. Swan, obviously, is bound for the Hall of Fame, but at this stage of their respective careers, perhaps the greater loss in terms of effectiveness is Jim Smith to the USFL drum. So it's really two gaping holes they must fill in their receiving core. Franco, he scored the only touchdown for the Steelers in the first half. He has decent yardage here, seven, maybe eight. Bob, I mentioned in the first half that Walter Abercrombie is a 
average blocker, not superior blocker, but on Harris's touchdown and on that particular play, Mr. Abercrombie did an excellent job. Blocked through the man, got him to his knees, and Franco Harris runs inside him. And John Stallworth has not caught a pass so far today, which surprises the heck out of me. He did latch on to one, but it was called back by a penalty. got eight on the last play. Steelers have converted on three and seven third downs. They may have taken too much time. No. There were still six seconds left on the clock. I believe that's the center. That's going to be on Mike Webster. Let's see if we can watch Webster move here and pick it up. Start. Center. Illegal snap. It is Mike Webster yes. playing in his 146th consecutive game. He's never missed one. He's appeared in five straight Pro Bowls. He made a rare mistake there. It'll be third and seven instead of two. And now all kinds of changes for Denver. New personnel. Ball start. Center. Illegal snap. Number 52. He can play. One of the few nose men in the game that can handle a nose man, a uh, center in the game that can handle a nose man by himself. A great advantage for Pittsburgh. Stout pops it over to Hawthorne, and Hawthorne drags a defender with him for a first down. Mike Harden made the tackle, but he couldn't do it before Hawthorne had the first. Denver had seven guys at the line of scrimmage and on the snap of the ball were after clipped out. Hawthorne, the hot receiver, realizing, look at the safety coming in there, realizing that he's the hot receiver as soon as that defensive man passed him, he turned and looked to the quarterback and the reception. Harden on the tackle, good first down pickup. Stout rolling right. Davis chasing him. Stout gets outside. Stout is to the 15-yard line for a first down. He got 16 on the play. Stout is no slouch when it comes to athletic ability. Good naked reverse, I believe that was, or naked rollout. I believe that was instituted by the Cincinnati Bengals. Generally, there is a tight end. They're coming underneath from the backside to be a receiver if there is pressure on the quarterback, but an excellent run. Uva Von Schaman has kicked three field goals in that Miami-Buffalo game. Nine-nothing Dolphins over the Bills. Is it snowing in Buffalo? Couldn't be, not even there. First week in September. Abercrombie can't get outside. Mike Harden stopped him. The irony of this situation cannot be lost on Stout. Stout wasn't taken until the fifth round in 1977. Watched Terry Bradshaw perform in all pro fashion for 56 games before he ever got to play at all in the NFL. And now with the national spotlight focused on these two teams, because of Elway's debut, it is Stout at the moment who is shining for the Steelers. Once again, the important point for the Steelers here, hang on to the football. Second down, passing situation. Abercrombie out wide to the top. Second and 12. Stout lobs it out on the screen. Franco has it, but can't get away. Well covered by Denver. Excellent job by that defense. Very active linebackers. Gratishar, Swenson, Jackson, Busick, all way under 228 pounds. Very, very active. Of course, I'm kind of sorry to see it happen, but this is Randy Gratishar's last season in the NFL. From my all-time great town to be from if you're a football player. And that's Champion, Ohio. It has the right ring to it. There's no doubt about that. And he has been a champion both at Ohio State and with the Broncos. but he doesn't have his completion. Flag goes down, though. I'm not sure about this call. Mike Harden, five yards in front of the reception, made contact with the football. There may be a discussion here by the officials. They threw the flag, and it was going to be on Dennis Smith, number 49, for interference, but I believe when the contact was made by Harden up front, that wipes out the, the, any chance of interference. We'll see what happens, though. Cunningham here, oh, Smith on it. by the defensive team. That's it. There is no pass interference going back. That's Steve Foley on the contact. The 
right on the money on it, Trump. Harden barely touched it with his fingertips, and as soon as the call was made, and obviously Chuck Noll chagrined over the reversal, but as soon as the call was made, Harden ran toward the official pleading his case, saying, no, no, I touched the ball, and by rule, that wipes the pass interference out, and he was correct. And the, the official watching the pass interference, of course, is not there to keep his eye on anyone else. The other officials got together, and good call. I like to see that by the officials, to get together get it right. Anderson, his first field goal. Late in the first half, Trump, we noted that Elway had walked to the sideline holding his elbow, but he came back for a couple more series after that. Now we're told it is a bruised elbow. You see that it's taped, and that accounts for DeBerg's presence. Also, Elway's numbers in the first half might account in part for DeBerg starting the third quarter. I'm sure he was hoping for better, but let's first of all hope that he's healthy, and that, that is going to be a problem for the Broncos until they can build that offensive line around him. Anderson's kick to Wilson at the two. Steve Wilson to about the 24-yard line. This 1983 National Football League game is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world by Southern Pacific. 41,000 people working in 18 industries all across America. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. Now, Robert, the Denver Broncos have not thrown a screen yet today. And for a blitzing defense, a screen is a good outlet. It seems to me that... The Denver's got to put that in their offense or throw it to the tight end. They haven't even thrown it his direction today. There's the tight end right in motion. DeBerg trying to get out of trouble and does. Running for his life, but nonetheless took a lick as he went out. And they're going to call Robin Cole for that. He hit him as he crossed over out of bounds. We've got two flags, Bob. One at the snap. And one on the sideline. Jerry Seaman, the referee, is going to sort it out for us. But first, he's got to confer with his colleagues. Very seldom today has a quarterback from the Denver Broncos had time to set up and throw the football. And, of course, that is never going to help an offense. I'm not sure how much blame you can put on Elway or DeBerg if they have problems for the rest of the day. Pittsburgh has put great pressure on them. Trump, earlier I mentioned that Pittsburgh's statistics defensively against the run were the best in the league in 1982. They'll take the bigger of the two penalties, I believe. Yes. And they pace it off against the Steelers. Now, part of the reason why, obviously, the Steelers were effective against the rush, at least statistically, is the teams were throwing the ball against them quite a bit because they had excellent success in that regard. Six years ago, no way that call is made, but they are protecting, especially the quarterbacks, much more zealously than they once did. That's the seventh time Pittsburgh has been penalized for a total of 96 backward yards. Here's Winder carrying, and Winder is into Steeler territory at the 49 and loses the football. Now here's Cole, who goes from goat to hero in one play. the same play that the Denver Broncos scored the touchdown on. Underneath handoff, weak side sweep. Excellent job by Winder. He just lost the ball on a good hit. Watch DeBerg. Steps back, Winder underneath. Good pull. And it's loose. Good call. Call right there to pick it up. And once again, great field position in Pittsburgh with the ball. They place it on the Denver 30. Lambert and Johnson were involved on the hit. Cole picks it up. The turnovers are even. The Steelers have a three-point lead and the ball when we come back. The uh, trainers and the coaches
coaches are looking at Jim Wright, the tight end. He was hurt in that return by Robin Cole, first and 10 Pittsburgh. Stout gives to Franco from the Denver 30. Breaks a couple of tackles and struggles forward for a gain of seven. Steve Foley will get credit for the stop. Frank Pollard now in the ball game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It does appear that they're going to conservatively run the ball down the field now. Pollard, the best blocking back that the Pittsburgh Steelers have on their roster presently. And he's a good escort for Frank O'Harris. The way the Steeler pass rush has been teeing off, if they can establish any kind of bulge here, it's going to be awfully tough for Denver. carries and Frank Pollard who very quietly has established a career average of four and a half yards per carry mostly as a backup although he did have his moment as a starter last year before losing that assignment to Walter Abercrombie Pollard with good yardage on this play and a first down and a good block by Franco Harris too once again that underneath handoff that's the same play that Denver has run with some success. Watch Cunningham. Releases outside, and the guard will flash on that linebacker. That is, if he's there, hit him. If he's not, pass him by. Pollard up there for a good gain in a first down. 12 yards on the carry. 12 yards to the 12, where it's first down. With just under seven minutes to play in the third quarter, the Steelers lead it by a score of 10-7. to seven. Intercepted. Picked off by Louis Wright. There's a flag down on this play. No reason to throw that football. Pollard was not even close to being open. I don't see the flag. My mistake, Trump. My mistake. There is no flag, and the interception stands up. Once again, you can see he was not ready to throw it. He threw it instead. Louis Wright clearly in front of the receiver, Frank Pollard. Should have kept that one right where it was, in his hand. A look at what's happened on Denver's previous possessions. The one time they scored after a Franco Harris fumble gave them the ball at the Pittsburgh 20. Sammy Winder carried four times and eventually got it over. Here's DeBerg, two winder, and three yards on first down. Interesting call. We continue with the possessions by the Denver Broncos, and they have not been very productive offensively, but their defense has played outstanding, allowing the Pittsburgh Steelers at home just 10 points. Here's something to be very proud of. In truth, the Steelers have backed them up frequently since midway through the second quarter. The Steelers have had the ball in Denver territory often, but turnovers and penalties have hurt them. I would think this is a blitz situation for Pittsburgh. They got eight guys up there at the line of scrimmage. Coors number 90, here they come. DeBerg steps up and unloads. The defender falls down. There's a penalty flag. It's over the head of Watson. I don't know who they'll... had the coverage, and let's see who they'll call it Yeah, again. I'm not sure who they'll call it on. See the blunt 47 or Steve Watson 81. There it is against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mel Blunt, who is even after 14 years in the league. Watch him at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the contact. Watch a little move inside. And then, yes, good call. And I'm sure Mel knows it. Automatic first down. Doesn't give him a lot of yards. But nevertheless, they continue with the ball. Pittsburgh has been penalized Illegal for over 100 yards. Number 47, defense, first down. Eight separate flags have been thrown against them. Jackson and Wright have interceptions for the Broncos. Rulon Jones has two fumble recoveries. So although Denver has mounted virtually no offense against the Steelers, those other factors have combined to keep them in the game. By just three at 10 7, and Winder bursts up the middle and gets eight on first down. Robin Cole makes the tackle. And 
now Jim Breach has kicked a field goal in Cincinnati. 35 yards, 17-3 Raiders in the third. Minnesota Cleveland is 17-14 now. Brian Seif to Mike Pruitt at the start of the third quarter. Six yards and a touchdown to pull the Browns closer. Atlanta leads Chicago 13-10. Gerald Riggs touchdown run from a yard out. The latest score for the Falcons. New Orleans lead at home 21-10 over the Cardinals. Green Bay beating Houston at the Astrodome. Last score of 28-17 midway through the third. Winder again. He's been a workhorse for him. He has a first down. Mike Merriweather makes the tackle at the 40-yard line of Denver. New England's lead is 16-13 in the third at home over Baltimore. But John Smith field goal from 39 yards out snaps a 13-all tie. Look at that score. Ed Murray's <laughs> field goal from 48 makes it 8-0. They've got a couple of field goals by Murray and a safety when Doug English tackled Jerry Goldstein in the end zone. Sammy Winder has carried 13 times for 56 yards unofficially. Look out, here they come. DeBerg gets it away. Nearly intercepted by Blunt, which would have been his 54th career interception. Intended for Jim Wright to tight end, which is rather encouraging. First time they've thrown it in the tight end's direction. And once again, Pittsburgh in an all-out blitz. You see Cole and a strong safety, Donnie Shell, overthrown just out of the reach of Mel Blunt. Second down now and 10, and here comes the other troops. I would think this is the time you run the ball. As unfamiliar as you might be running against a prevent defense, this is when you might pop one through. Left tackle. Nope. Tight in. 87, Jim Wright. Jerry Seaman knows for sure. There's Wright, the suspected culprit. This has been a sloppy game offensively for I'd both say teams. So. Turnovers, penalties. Some of that can be attributed to the excellent defense which each has played. But mistakes in offensive execution have to uh, be part of the responsibility. And it is right. Maybe because uh, maybe because uh, DeBerg can't really shout out the signals. Players are having a difficult time hearing what he has to say. played the entire first half. Late in that half, he bruised his elbow, although he continued to play until halftime. Now that elbow is taped. Elway on the sidelines, and DeBerg has replaced him. 4-2-5 defense by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Offsides defense, free play. Second and 15. Intercepted, and then dropped. Let's see if they rule it an interception and a subsequent fumble. Denver ball. Denver ball, if they rule that a reception. Wait a minute, how can they say Pittsburgh? It was an interception, Trump. Oh, excuse me, interception. I apologize. That's why. Thank you very much. I got a little out of control there, but it's going to be offsides on the defense. So it'll be brought back. Sam Washington in as an extra defensive back. Number 41 makes the interception. Offside. Number 67. Defense. Defense. There it is. That's clean. Takes a couple of steps, so it's a fumble. Donnie Shell goes after it. Rick Woods also goes after it. Nobody can pick it up. It goes out of bounds. So on the basis of that play, it's Pittsburgh ball at that spot. But we come back to the original infraction, which was an offsides against Gary Dunn of the Steelers. And the Broncos pick up five yards to the 40, and the interception is erased. Got a little excited there, Robert. It happens to us all. Yes. If uh, the ball had gone out of bounds and Upchurch was the last one to have control of it, it would have been Denver's ball. Not a bad play. But second and ten. Zach Thomas in motion on the play. DeBerg in trouble and sacked again. I started to make this point earlier, Trump. susceptible to a good passing game. Part of the reason was that their pass rush was not as effective as it had been in past years. 
based upon preseason results and upon what we've seen in this game, they may be on the road toward correcting that, and that's really the key to a successful pass defense. How much pressure can you put on? Once again, I think we've got a Denver receiver, 82, Zach Thomas, turning up field too early, which is an unforgivable sin. He's looking right at the quarterback. But you talk about the pass rush of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got seven guys who can rush the passer from the defensive line spot. Let's see if this is on 82. Illegal motion, number 82, offense, penalty decline, third down. Now see, that's unforgivable because he was going back to the formation, had a clear line at the football. He's just trying to get a jump on the officials, and they're going to catch him every time. That's all they're looking for. Backpedaling gets rid of it, though. Thomas makes the catch. He stopped short of the first down by Donnie Shale and Rick Woods. Watch the blitz from the outside. 33, Harvey Clayton. And the hot receiver makes the catch, but Pittsburgh wins the war. They don't get the first down. Denver's got to punt it. Harvey Clayton, a free agent rookie out of Florida State, in as an extra defensive back in that set. Putting the pressure on DeBerg. Preston to kick again. Paul Skansky lets it bounce. Still not down. Surrounded by white shirts at the 16-yard line. Prestes does his job, backing the Steelers up into poor field position, the worst they've had in some time. 317 to play in the third. Tommy Kramer to Ted Brown, 10 yards and a touchdown. The third score of the day for Brown, 24-14. Vikings over the Browns. It's been a day for Ted Brown, not the Cleveland Browns so far. Chicago over Atlanta, 17 to 13 in the third. That's at Soldier Field, and Green Bay's lead is 31-17 over the Oilers in Houston. Coming up, second half of the doubleheader on NBC. Most of you will see the Jets at San Diego. Others, Seattle and Kansas City. Stout goes to work from the 16-yard line, gives to Abercrombie. A yard, perhaps two. Louis Wright, Randy Gratishaw there. That almost fumbled that snap from center. He was really struggling to get it up to Abercrombie's stomach. Just the time remaining in the third quarter. Inside three minutes. 10-7 Steelers. toss to Franco. He knew just where he had to go for the first down, and he has it. Back right after we check with NFL 83 in New York. Thank you, Bob Costas. In New England, Frank Cush may be on the verge of his first coaching victory. Pagel passes to Bernard Henry, his second touchdown. Henry also played for Cush at Arizona State. The Colts lead the Patriots. Let's go back to Three River Stadium. <laughs> All right, our thanks to the folks in New York for the update. Bob Costas, Bob Trumpy, 2.29 to play. Third quarter, first and 10 from the 28-yard line of the Steelers. Short drop, Stout. Ball batted up in the air, but nobody can get to it. Intended for John Stallworth. Little slant pass, to, slant pass to the middle. Good pressure up front by, I believe, Rulon Jones got his hands up. Number 75. I can't really pick out who that is. Rulon Jones has already had a big day, Trump. A couple of fumble recoveries when Franco Harris coughed it up. That's the bad news for Franco fans. The good news, he scored the only Steeler touchdown. The 94th TD of his career. Here's Franco carrying. Flag flies as Franco goes down at the 30-yard line. I believe they're going to get Benny Cunningham holding number 89. It is 
is a Steeler holding. Well, with a 10-7 lead in the way the Pittsburgh Steeler defense has been playing today, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if uh, I think that's a cramp. I think Bob Swenson has a cramp in his foot. It is very hot, very humid, and surprisingly, the Pittsburgh Steelers go with those wool jerseys. They don't change jerseys when it's warm. They get very small size jerseys for their offensive linemen, and then the defensive linemen can't hold. I believe they got Benny right there. A lot of people think, when you look at the likes of Corson and Webster, here's Seaman. Illegal use of hands. Number 89. Offense. You see right there on 57, excuse me, 51, Bob Swenson, and he's got a handful of jersey. Good call by the officials. You were going to say? When you look at those muscle men, the Websters, the Corsons, people like that along that offensive line for the Steelers, people think they're wearing those very tight jerseys and the short sleeves to intimidate by showing off the muscle. Here's an interception by Dennis Smith. He laterals the ball back, but I think the play is going to be whistled dead after the interception the fifth Pittsburgh turnover. Let's give credit to Bryson Manor, number 66. He may not show up in the play. He may get no credit whatsoever, but he was, he was between Stout and the receiver. They were setting up a screen. And because Manor was right there, Stout couldn't throw it. He throws it down for an interception. Denver's ball. Great picture of what happened here. 32 Franco Harris for the screen. Corson 77 about to go out. You see Stout Pump out there to the flat. Bryson Manor standing right in his way. There's Mike Harden. Clearly in the way of Greg Hawthorne. Excuse me, not Mike Harden. Dennis Smith. And he makes the interception. Great field position. Now Denver can certainly be back in this ball game with their problems all day long. If they can get it in from here and go on top of Pittsburgh. Since they scored the go-ahead touchdown in the second quarter, really have not threatened at all. Arrows, very little yardage on first down, and even that touchdown, which gave them the 7-0 lead, which they've since relinquished, was set up by the defense of fumble recovery at the 20. Minnesota's lead is now 27-14 over the Browns. The Pittsburgh Steelers have turned the ball over five times today, which is very unusual for this football team. I'd say this is a blitz down. Second and ten from the 27. Here they come. Short drop. And a bullet that is incomplete. Intended for Upchurch with Blunt on the coverage. Thrown somewhat behind Rick Upchurch. Man of very, very gifted talents and speed. You'll see the blitz coming. Game's up front. Just throws it behind him. I'm not sure he could have made the catch. But still. Watch where this ball comes. He turns his head. The ball is on its way. Backhand. Yeah, he might have been able to catch that had the Burke led him properly. Third down and ten. And once again, the Steeler defense has certainly done its job. How do you blitz here, Bob? Shotgun. They're going to throw it. I blitz. in 1981 out of Oklahoma opted instead to go to Montreal of the Canadian League and now has returned and in effect is debuting in the NFL doing an excellent job but Denver in that in that shotgun if they don't run a play from it the defensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers can just tee off they don't have to regard the run at all Ten yards. And now look what they're faced with they had great field position at Pittsburgh's 27, and now they've got the punts. The Steelers send nobody deep. If Prestige can hit the coffin corner, more power to it. That's what the Steelers say. They hope it'll go into the end zone. He did. Oh, very nice. Seven-yard line. Missed opportunity, though, for the Denver Broncos. And every time they've gone in that shotgun, I'll bet you of the seven sacks that Pittsburgh has gotten today, of them have come against that shotgun. Would you agree, Bob? At least. 
The kick by Prestige is good for 30 yards, but it's not the distance. It's where he put it out at the seven-yard line. Neither club has thrown many points on the scoreboard, the and in effect is debuting in the NFL. Doing an excellent job, but Denver in that in that shotgun, if they don't run a play from it, the defensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers can just tee off. They don't have to regard the run at all. Awesome. Ten yards. And now look what they're faced with. They had great field position at Pittsburgh's 27, and now they've got to punt. The Steelers send nobody deep. If Prestige can hit the coffin corner, more power to it. That's what the Steelers say. They hope it'll go into the end zone. He did. Oh, very nice. Seven-yard line. Missed opportunity, though, for the Denver Broncos. And every time they've gone in that shotgun, I'll bet you of the seven sacks that Pittsburgh has gotten today, five of them have come against that shotgun. Would you agree, Bob? At least. The kick by Prestige is good for 30 yards, but it's not the distance. It's where he put it out. At the seven-yard line. Neither club has thrown many points on the scoreboard. The difference to the extent that it matters is that Pittsburgh has moved the ball at times against Denver and then turnovers or penalties have shut them down. Denver, while turning the ball over on three occasions themselves, has been unable to mount any kind of offense against Pittsburgh, at least since very early in the game. Abercrombie carries to try and give them some breathing room out across the 10 for a gain of maybe four on the play. Call it five, second and five. The Uva von Schaman show continues at Buffalo. His fourth field goal, this one from 50. 12 nothing in the fourth. Hey Stevenson's offense there. And you're sure it's Duke not snowing? Stilch. You're sure it's not snowing? I'm betting it's not snowing. Okay. okay? What makes you suspect it is? Just because it's Buffalo? Low scoring. Probably a number one pick out of Baylor last year hurt his knee in preseason. He's slow to get up here. Didn't play in a regular season game until after the strike had ended, so his progress was slow. It came on late last year. Gets them the first down here at the end of the third quarter. 10 7 Steelers back after this from your local station. He's slow to get up here. Didn't play in a regular season game until after the strike had ended, so his progress was slow. It came on late last year. Gets them the first down here at the end of the third quarter. 10-7 Steelers back after this from your local station. He still hasn't gotten up, Trump. And they're bringing, bringing a stretcher on the field. Yes, excuse me. He was hit a good, solid shot by Dennis Smith. Tom Jackson spins him around, and just as Abercrombie goes down, look to the right edge of the screen. You see his head really get snapped to the side. The doctor suggested the stretcher. Abercrombie gets up. I've seen a lot of players feel a lot better in a split second when the doctor pulls a needle out to shoot it in the ball of your foot or in your elbow or shoulder. Say, Doc, look, he's feeling a whole lot better. Can we put this off? So the stretcher goes off one way and Abercrombie comes off under his own power the other. We start the fourth quarter. First and ten from the Steelers' 20. They lead it 10 to 7. to say with the ineffectiveness of the Pittsburgh Steeler offense even though you take, take into account the talent of Walter Abercrombie Frank Pollard has got to be considered a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers he's a better blocker he carries the ball with a certain vengeance and you may, maybe you make Abercrombie the specialty back in that Pittsburgh Steeler offense I think I shortchanged Pollard he got 15 on the carry to the 35 
1983 National Football League game is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is taking charge by Bud Light. The best has a taste all its own. And by the easy beta Betamax from Sony. Simply amazing because it's amazingly simple. Now first and five for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I'm wondering if they can call Gross Encoachment. Gross Encoachment. There goes Abercrombie down into the locker. They may take an x-ray of his neck. is to Pollard coming outside. Pollard has the first down and a gain of six, perhaps seven. Good call, Denver Broncos in a blitz. Benny Cunningham did an excellent job on the strong side. Pollard has been impressive. Of course, he's fresh. Has not played a great deal today, but every time he's carried the ball, he's picked up valuable yardage for Pittsburgh. lead is 20 to 3 in the fourth at Cincinnati. Chris Barr has kicked his second field goal. This one a 39 yarder. Marcus Allen has a pair of touchdown runs. Cunningham in motion. The pitch is to Franco. He can't get away. Steve Wilson, number 45 back makes the tackle. Great job by the Denver defense once again. Let's watch one of the key matchups. And that is offensive center all-pro Mike Webster versus Reuben Carter, number 68 of the Denver Broncos. That is a real war in there. And when you play when you play a 34 defense, the center has got to be able to ha handle that nose man by himself. Unfortunately, we somehow lost that replay. We'll get it for you again. needs 13. Drills Stallworth. I don't see a flag as there was the last time that Stallworth latched onto one, so that apparently will stand up and become officially career reception number 300 for John Stallworth. Only the third Pittsburgh receiver to do that. Behind Lynn Swan and L.B. Nickel on their all-time list, and with a good chance if he stays healthy, a passing Swan both in career receptions and That's career yardage. the crowd stand up in response to it. Close enough to measure for the first down. developments on the field caused us to turn our attention elsewhere. You were making the point about the tight jerseys worn by the Steeler offensive linemen. And it's for a reason, so they can't be grabbed by the charging defensive players. Although many people, uh, casual observers, think the reason is to intimidate and to show off the muscles. It, it also serves that purpose indirectly. Having been down there across the line from those guys, yes. Zero. Still the short sleeve. Franco Harris carried and added virtually nothing to his lifetime rushing total, which is approaching 11,000 career yards. When you talk about Franco's accomplishments, and this takes nothing away from his Hall of Fame career, what it really does is place in perspective the greatness of Jimmy Brown. Franco may pass Jim Brown on the all-time list, but he'll have many, many more carries by the time he does it. He may pass him on the all-time touchdown list, but he'll have many, many more games played than Jimmy Brown by the time he does it. Stout in some trouble, which he can't escape. He throws the ball. I spoke too soon. He got it to Franco as he was going down. Resourceful maneuver by Stout. Certainly a desperation on Stout's part. Good pressure from the backside by the Denver Broncos. Webster on Reuben Carter. And now Stout, whoa, just end over end. You can almost fair catch that one. Certainly reminds me of another reception that Franco Harris made in this very stadium back in the early 70s that seemed to turn this franchise around. 
immaculate reception. Big first down. Barney Chavis almost wrapped Stout up, but he got rid of it for the first down at the 30. The word on Abercrombie, a jammed neck. Probably will not return. Pollard. Loses Bumble. the football. It's Smith who comes up with it. Now he loses it. Stout has a crack at it. He loses it. And now Jackson has it. No flags. Denver's ball. Six turnovers now by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And every local sportscaster in America is drooling over the prospect of using that one on the football follies. You would have thought this was a bar of soap the way it was squirting out of people's hands. Music with the hit. Harden knocks the ball away. And now it's a Max Sennett movie. <laughs> I like that trunk. Very nice. We'll be right back. Takes from the highlight film. This ball certainly is slippery. It is hot. It is very humid. Here you see the ball just bouncing away from Dennis Smith when he hits his own teammate. Now Stout makes the... Well, he does finally try to get on the ball, and Tom Jackson finally with the recovery. First and 10 Denver, at just on the Pittsburgh side of the 50. The bird with lots of time. Up church. Was he inbounds? No. No. First times the Berg since he came in a ball game has had time to set up and throw the football. Look at that, nine turnovers for the two teams plus 18 penalties. Hmm. How much attributed to defensive excellence? How much to inept offensive execution? I think both coaches will look at their offenses and say they were terrible today. And probably give big pats on the back to their defensive players. Both coaches. Over 10 minutes remaining in the game as Winder tries to cut back, picks up three yards, third and seven coming up. Denver has featured that running play, about the only running play they've run all day long with any consistency. And now we've got a passing situation for Denver coming in with two different running backs, an extra receiver, and wholesale changes by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Four men up front, two linebackers, and that leaves five defensive backs. Deberg over the middle and complete. Winder slipping out of the backfield was the target. And he had time. He should be very upset with himself for the first time. Look at that. Wow. They were minus yardage in the first half. 26 total yards passing, but that should have been a completion. Once again, the pressure of the defense. It didn't get to him that time, but it affected his throw. Elway trying to encourage DeBerg. From all reports, Elway is extremely popular with his teammates. There is little, if any, resentment over the lucrative contract and all the attention that he has generated, and much of that can be attributed to the fact that he himself doesn't buy his own buildup. He's been able to keep it in perspective, and his teammates appreciate that. Preston tried to drop it inside the 10, but it took a Pittsburgh roll for the touchback. The Steelers get the ball back at the 20-yard line. It's hard to believe, with all the excitement that we've had, it's just a 10-7 game with 9-18 left. Extra innings the past couple of weeks to all that knocked them out of contention. Pollard carries. Two, maybe three yards for him. It's a close one at Soldier Field, 20 to 17. Barkowski hits Alfred Jenkins for 21 yards and a score. To put the Falcons back in front. And some excitement at the Astrodome. 31-24 in the fourth. There's still 11 minutes remaining. An eight-yard run by Earl Campbell has brought the Oilers to within a touchdown. Second and seven from the 23. Franco, nothing. 
job by Tom Jackson. He was in there at the snap of the ball. One of the secrets of playing outstanding defense is the quick reaction on the snap of the ball. And Jackson was in the backfield before Corson, 77, could get a lick on him. He was there to almost take the handoff. Watch it from the center. You can see that Tom Jackson is right there beating the offensive guard, Steve Corson. Now third down and long yardage situation for Pittsburgh. Exactly eight minutes to play in the game as Stout takes the snap and takes a hit, and down he goes in the grasp of Rulon Jones. Boy, these two defenses have been outstanding today. I can't remember in a first game of a regular season, Bob, where I've seen two defenses play better team football. Stout had no chance there whatsoever. Watch from the right-hand side of your screen. Double on the nose, man. That leaves Wolfley 73 man-on-man -man with Rulon Jones, and Rulon Jones just flat beats him. Colquitt kicks out of the end zone. Thomas Fair catch, almost lost it. Covers it at the 44-yard line of Denver. So seven minutes and 36 seconds remaining, and almost all the celebrating today has been done by the defensive units. Introducing Easy Beta from Sony. The official distance on the Colquitt punt, 46 yards. He had a little trouble getting it off and came fairly close to the first block kick of his career. See if DeBerg can generate something. Winder. Nice move. Pittsburgh territory around Blunt. Blunt and Shell eventually drag him out with some signs of life by the Denver offense. Good call by Dan Reeves from the sideline. You'll see all the action up front blitzing. Good pull. Winder cuts back against the grain. And because all the linebackers were up there at the line of scrimmage, they were consumed and Winder with a I think the longest run of the day by the Denver Broncos and their deepest penetration, 21 yards on the carry, their deepest penetration in this half. From the 34 of Pittsburgh, and despite all the wacky plays they've been involved in, trailing by only three, Nathan Poole carries. The Denver ground game comes to life. Rather interesting. Denver's had very little success throwing the ball, so there's no real threat behind the defensive line, and yet they run a draw for nine yards. A draw is supposed to be set up by a pass, and when you can't pass, generally the draw does not work. Second at a short two, we'll call it. short of the first down. Is it possible they could be stopped again? Denver has certainly had their chances, but every time the Pittsburgh defense has risen to the occasion. Watch 92. Pulled by Powell, Paul Howard. Well, there's good activity up there, and they just stuffed the Denver offensive line. Denver, by the way, on the day, Bob, one of ten in third down conversions. First down and then some. Winder still on his feet, down to the 12-yard line. Now that is really strange. The strange part is, it's a draw once again. This takes a long time to develop. Look at the blitzing. Everybody coming. That takes a long time to develop. Generally, offenses aren't very successful trying to do that. That's surprising, but another good call by Dan Reeves and the Denver Broncos are knocking on the door. With it. As poorly as they played offensively, 91 yards. You know when their last 100-yard rusher was for the Denver Broncos? Otis Armstrong, 1980. Winder may break that drought, but for now it's Arrows carrying. Driven out of 
bounds after a gain of two. They had fretted over the absence of Gerald Wilhite. The hamstring injury has him on the injured reserve list, and Wilhite had done a good job for them last year. But the rookie, Sammy Winder, a very impressive NFL debut. He has scored the only touchdown for the Broncos today, and he's broken off some fairly long runs. correct myself on Winder would be an impressive debut except for the fact that this is his second year minor point that we should take note of Pool carries he takes some people with him down to about the five and Bob they found a weakness somewhere because that is another draw watch the bird goes back looking like it's going to be a pass and there was a mix up in the handoff and Nate Pool still gets almost five yards. Now the biggest play for the Denver Broncos of the day. Third down and about two. And 5-10 on the clock. The field goal is almost assured, but this is another missed opportunity if they don't get it in the end zone or at least get a first down. down for them. They're picking on the interior of the defensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Rob Lytle that time, 41, lined up at a tight end, went in motion. He was a trapper up through the middle. Watch. Let's just see Lytle kind of dive in there. Excellent leg strength by Peros and are they going to measure? They're still not sure if it's first down. Hobbling off is Gary Dunn, number 67. The way he's running, looks like he has a cramp. The Steelers are nothing if not deep. First Along down. that defensive line, it is the first down by half of football. It is hot. It is very humid. Both these defenses have been on the field for an extended period of time. I'm sure to them, it'll seem like a week when they look at those game films come Monday or Tuesday, and the offense for both these teams will be out in a matter of seconds. There's not much to look at. Most important thing here for Denver, hang on to the football. yourself two chances. They go with the pitch to Winder, trying to turn the corner. Can't do it. The Steelers hold a team meeting on his body after a very short game. a long time for Winder to get out here and there are plenty of people out there to make the tackle Merriweather Woodruff got a Denver Bronco down on the field and it is Sammy Winder the ball carrier he may be more tired than he is anything else he got hit and hit good earlier I incorrectly identified him as a rookie maybe it just feels like he's played a couple of years worth today because he has really been the workhorse the 100 yard mark in Russia. He scored a touchdown. 323 on the clock. Third and goal from the two coming up. And we'll return to Pittsburgh in a moment. Tommy Winder, who unofficially has 94 yards, leaves under his own power. Bob, I, I haven't the slightest idea what they may run here. Maybe that underneath handoff sweep that they've had success with. Pittsburgh fans on their feet. Preston and Poole are the backs. Exactly. 
exactly three minutes remaining on the snap. The bird with the fake, the throw to the end zone, touchdown of the tight end Eglon. An offense that had been all but comatose for the Broncos comes alive. There's a flag on the field. I think that was after the play. They're going to get unsportsmanlike conduct on a Denver player and a Pittsburgh player, I do believe. Personal foul, number 41, Denver. Personal foul, Offsetting penalty. Offsetting we have a touchdown. touchdown. A little premature celebration by the Pittsburgh fans, but it was after the play. The interesting thing about that play is there were about four options for DeBerg, and he did a good job of getting away from a rusher, and as poorly as Denver has played, to be up 13-10 has to be a great, great boost to their confidence. This offense all day long had only one substantial drive in it, and they turned it in in the closing moments of this fourth quarter. They take the lead with 2.54 remaining. There's the 14th point off the bare foot of Carlos. Flag down. Well, what a busy day for Jerry Seaman and his crew. Here's fake, the touchdown again. Fake trap. DeBerg avoids little. Egloff standing all there, out there by himself. Robin Cole was the closest man to him. And boy, oh boy, is that a gigantic play. You see Egloff, 85 in your picture, blocking. I don't even think he was intended to be a seat receiver. When that play was designed, he was there for protection. But because of the time involved, being a veteran receiver and knowing what's going on, he sneaks out, catches a touchdown. Holding, number 53, that's on Randy Gratisher, and I believe, yeah, he's the outside man. Occasionally, they try to hook that outside rusher. He must have grabbed the hold of the defensive end. Now Carlos has to go to 30 yards for the PAT. Same result. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So it is 14-10 Denver. The Steelers have all three of their timeouts remaining, and 2.54 to do something. Now I can tell you the first question that will be asked of Dan Reeves when this game is over who will start next week? If both quarterbacks are healthy, who will start next week? That wasn't a pretty drive and it was done exclusively by the run except for the touchdown but he did get him in the end zone. They go to Baltimore now, next week where an interesting confrontation is brewing because after all it was Baltimore which drafted Elway he didn't want to go there. There are undoubtedly some hard feelings, some resentment on the part of Baltimore fans. They'll be waiting to get on Elway. You got to look at our lineup of games, week two, NFL 83 on NBC. Well, I would imagine Pittsburgh Steelers fans sitting right here in Three River Stadium are have nothing bad to say about Cliff Stout except they're all wishing right now Terry Bradshaw were the quarterback. Because in uh, these situations with three minutes left, he has in his uh, entire career been outstanding. And the kick by Carlos. Henry Odom, does he want to bring it out? No, he wants to touch that. Now it's up to the Denver defense to hold him one more time. Look at the first down yardage for this. That's the first half. Steelers lead, second half. Broncos lead. And that first down yardage is so critical nowadays in the NFL because second down and long, the defense changes completely. We're required to tell our listeners, Trump, that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the NFL is prohibited. the air on first down. Lobs it out to Pollard. He's out of bounds. They don't have to expend the timeout, but the gain is short. Only about three yards. Nevertheless, made the defense do their job, make a tackle, and the offense does gain yardage, and Pollard has been impressive today. The Broncos are bucking a couple of statistics 
which before the game did not bode well for them. In the last two years, on artificial surface, they're 0-6. And Pittsburgh, since moving into Three River Stadium in 1970, has been all but invincible here. They're 84-19 and at home. Stout wants Stallworth. He's got it. Was he inbounds? No. no. I think that's a good call. Very close. But Steve Foley did an excellent job of making up ground on John Stallworth again, and that ball was well thrown by Cliff Stout. We'll have a chance to watch it. Zone up front. Foley into the picture. One foot in. That's all. You need two feet in professional football. And at times, I don't know how the officials keep track of that. Judge the catch and whether or not both feet were inbounds. If the Steelers should fail here, they would still have some life because they haven't used a timeout yet. And the two-minute warning still remains with 2.33 left. Look out. Boom. Well, if they were entertaining any thoughts at all, as Carl Mecklenburg turns in the sack, a rookie from Minnesota, if they were entertaining any thoughts of going for it on fourth down, which I guess would have been possible on fourth and six, that was erased with that sack. Fourth and very long yardage. You know, coming into this ball game, you would think the strength of the Pittsburgh Steelers was their defensive line and their offensive line, and yet they have been sacked, as you just saw the stat, four times today. Rather unusual. Certainly something for Chuck Noll to uh, vent his anger about. All quick kicks. Thomas Fields at the 45 about midfield 42 yard kick for Paul Quinn let's give Thomas a five yard return there'll be one snap from center before the two minute warning the problem here is unless the Broncos fumble even if they don't get a first down any kind of decent punt is going to back the Steelers up with very little time remaining and they're going to have to use their timeouts just to hold the clock in check so they have any chance at all. You know, there were people in this area, and I include not just this area, around the country who figured this game to be a whitewash for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Elway, you know, Cincinnati coming back, 2010 now, the Los Angeles Raiders in the fourth quarter. But Elway has had very little effect on this football game, and he was the star coming in. Whoa. Sammy Winder, wow, Houston has come back. Sammy Winder has really turned out to be the star of this football game and the Denver defense. who carries with one real objective to protect the football. The clock will stop at two minutes after a gain of a couple of yards. And again this year at the two-minute warning, we're going to be treated to some of the most exciting finales from NFL history. Chuck Noll hopes another one is brewing here. We call them fantastic finishes, and here's a look at one of them. Two minutes remaining here. Denver up 14-10, and with the ball, second down and eight on the next snap and as soon as we are finished here it'll be the Jets at San Diego for most of the country Nick Enberg and Merlin Olson to call the action others will see the Seattle Kansas City game well if Denver comes out of here with a victory and they were about a touchdown underdog at kickoff time they will not have accomplished it the way their fans would have imagined they would have thought if they were to win today would be on the strength of an impressive Elway debut. Elway had a very rocky first half. DeBerg relieved him in the second half. The Denver defense really has been the story. But DeBerg was able to engineer one drive of slightly more than 50 yards late in this fourth quarter. And that's the difference right now. Watson in motion. Well, the pass is the furthest thing from their minds. Oh, yeah? I spoke too soon. Look at this. Hello. Jim Wright. Great job by DeBerg. An excellent fake. And that's the first pass reception by their tight end. Someone that they must use more of. Just more options for the quarterbacks at Denver. The Steelers have three timeouts left. Still a glimmer of hope. Let's go to New York. Well, Bob, more heartbreak. For Colts fans, look at this play. The Patriots have the ball. This is not a handoff. It's ruled a lateral, a backward pass. It looks like a good call. So this 99-yard return for Baltimore does not count. 
New England has just taken the lead, and maybe Frank Cush will not win his first game yet. Unbelievable. Frank Cush will be the subject of our Chronicle next week. He should have a lot of things to say. New England has now taken the lead. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. All right, thanks very much, Len Berman. Here we have a minute and 47 seconds remaining. And a first down for Denver at the 27-yard line of the Steelers. Bob, as difficult as it's been for Denver to have time to throw the ball, that was a very gutsy call by Dan Reeves. Roll out to Berg, did a great job selling it because uh, Denver had been able to run the ball on that sweep rather successfully. And I'm sure the instruction was if he isn't open from here to Philadelphia, you don't throw it at all. You Correct. just go down with it. Back in and healthy. Wrapped up and thrown down by Keith Gary. Now the Steelers stop the clock. Two left for them. To put this uh, game in perspective for, there's the final. The Raiders over Cincinnati, 20 to 10. Miami wins it on four. Uwe von Schaman field goals. 32, 22, 36, and 50 yards. Chicago makes it close. But Atlanta wins it 20 to 17 at Soldier Field. Anyway, to continue on the perspective of this win, last year this football team in Denver was two and seven. And there were a great many people who felt that the owner Edgar Kaiser was selling the team, that they were not committed to winning. When they traded for John Elway, suddenly a new attitude on the players' part. I think it's been displayed here, a never say die attitude, and that's a winning attitude. Dan Reeves has signed a new contract with the Denver Broncos and says in the future this is going to be the best franchise in the country. And there's the cornerstone right there. Regardless of his problems today, you can see him flexing that right arm is a bruised elbow. Certainly not as a lot of people expected. But nevertheless, he is the cornerstone, and if they can win and if he elevates their performance, he has certainly done his job. He ran into a stone wall and almost gave Pittsburgh the life they needed. Dan Reeves was almost out there to be the first one to recover that one. <laughs> he was ready to jump in there. Remember the game we did here, an opening game a couple of years ago, Trump? Versus Kansas City. Steelers and Kansas City, Pittsburgh running out the clock. They botched up a handoff. Terry Bradshaw lost the ball, and I think it was Thomas, Thomas Howard, Howard for Kansas City who picked it up and won about 65 yards for the game-winning touchdown. You can see Merriweather in there with his hand in there trying to get the ball loose. 133 left. Talking about quarterbacks, number eight there is Gary Kubiak, who might be the least publicized rookie quarterback in history. <laughs> a late-round draft choice out of Texas A&M, and there was no way he was going to get any ink in the Denver camp this year with Elway. But that's a pretty comfortable job, manning the clipboard. Rams over the Giants, 16-6. Successful debut for John Robinson as a head coach in the NFL. Did uh, Dickerson score? Doesn't look that way. Looks like Ferragamo to Mike Barber for a couple of touchdown passes. Minnesota beats Cleveland, 27 to 21. Brian Seip to Willis Adams for 23 yards to get the Browns close. But three touchdowns by Ted Brown of the Vikings, the difference in that game. Pittsburgh now out of timeouts. This is fourth down coming up. Keith Gary, number 92, along with Robin Cole, 56. Now what do you do? Mike Webster is running on the field. Number 52 standing out there. He thought it was fourth down. Do you do, go for the field goal or do you punt it? What do you do? You're going to let the clock run down as much as they possibly can. Carlos on the field. Tough choice for Dan Reeves. When you punt or go for the field goal, you run the risk of the block. Less risk when you punt than when you place kick, though. If he's successful, the lead is seven. If he misses it, the Thank Steelers you. will get it back at the 28th. 
everything. They let the time expire. Now they'll move back five yards, which will make what? A 42 yard field goal attempt. Now does he go to the punter? You know, I think I would. Yeah, here he comes. Prestridge is going to come on the field. Now all you need is a good snap. If that was their intention, Trump, why go to the trouble of bringing on the field goal unit? Why not just do it from the line of scrimmage? Well, one of the few chances a coach has to second-guess himself, maybe. I think this is the right choice. send nobody deep. They hope for the touchback in this situation. They hope for the block. They get the touchback. Obviously, I meant they hope for the touchback in Look the event. This. Look at this. Touchback. He's calling that touchback. So they get the ball in the 20. No timeouts. 80 yards to go. Four points behind. They didn't even get close to Prestige on the attempt to block. Stout comes in. Well, if I were uh, Denver and Joe Collier, the defensive coordinator, I think I'd have my defensive backs about 40 yards deep. Let's see what alignment they have here. Four men rushing, one linebacker, two, four, six defensive backs. Harden and Foley are the deepest two. Field goal does no good. That helps. Day. That is the most fitting punctuation to this ball game. We got a flag down, Bob, but that would, if that stands, that's the seventh turnover by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it does appear it's against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is. Seven turnovers. Number 27, offense, penalty decline. Defense is ball. They're calling Greg Hawthorne. I believe he ran a pick. There's Chuck Knoll. He cannot be happy with the way his defense has played being the short end of this score. He is certainly wide open. Watch the hit. Dennis Smith. No, nope, excuse me. Mike Harden on the hit. Steve Foley on the recovery. The seventh turnover of the day by the Pittsburgh Steelers. One more snap. Denver will just fall on it. And Denver, a team which has played very poorly away from home the past couple of years against Pittsburgh, a team which has been extremely effective at Free River Stadium, playing better than 800 football since 1970. Denver comes in here, and without any kind of performance by Elway, they win the ball game 14-10, and their aggressive defense does it for them. And I'll tell you, that plane right back to Denver, everybody wants to be on that plane. That's a great place to be when you win, a game you're not supposed to win. Dan Reeves congratulating Steve DeBerg. It's an unhappy beginning for Chuck Knoll and the Steelers. Can't fault the defense of either football team. They've played outstanding football. Reeves meets Knoll. 